Hi guys, it's Ashraf from Wizedu, and today we're going to be going through special angles. So, special angles are your angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And these are angles of which you are expected to know each trig function. So, if you got, for example, sine 30 degrees in an exam, you'd be expected to know the value of that without using a calculator. So you would have had to know that sine 30 was equal to half. So this value over here. So as you can see, there are quite a few values. However, they aren't that difficult to learn. In the description below, I'll put a link to a YouTube video which explains quite well a neat trick on how to learn the values of each special angle. Um, but personally, I like to learn it using the brute force method. So just learning that sine 30 is half cos 45 is 1 over root 2, tan 60 is root 3, just using a brute force method to learn it. However, if you want a memory technique, I will put a link in the description below. And just a note for some of these special angles, you can see that, um, take for example, sine 45 degrees. In my table, I have 1 over root 2 written as the value of sine 45. However, you may also have recognized that you could also get the value of root 2 over 2 because these two are in fact equal. Because if you take 1 over root 2 and multiply it by 1, root 2 over root 2, because root 2 over 2 is in fact 1, um, to rationalize that denominator, you'd get an answer of root 2 over 2. And this is the value you'd get from your calculator. So if you put sine 45 degrees in your calculator, your calculator would give you the answer of root 2 over 2. So I like to use unrationalized denominators when I'm working with special angles, and I'll tell you why now. For example, you had tan 30 degrees, and you had that multiplied to cos 30 degrees. If you use my method and use the unrationalized denominator for tan, this is what would happen. You'd have 1 over root 3 multiplied by root 3 over 2. And these two would cancel out very nicely to give you an answer of half. However, what if you used root 3 over 3, the rationalized version of tan 30, instead? What would your steps have looked like? Well, that would be like this. Tan 30 times cos 30 would then give you root 3 over 3 times root 3 over 2. And now you're going to be adding an extra step because you have to multiply in your thirds to then get 3, and then you have 3 over 6, and then you simplify to half. So I know it's only one extra step because here we had two steps, and here we have 3. But when it comes to an exam, I like to save as much time as possible, even a few seconds, because those few seconds are precious. So... I prefer, especially for tan, to have the unrationalized denominator, or tan 30, I mean. For 45, sine 45 and cos 45, I'm not so fussy. You could have the unrationalized denominator, but when I'm working with tan, I always try to use my um, unrationalized denominator. So I'm going to really encourage you guys to learn these off by heart, because that is part of the syllabus. You are required to know these, and... If you're going to be checking these in your calculator every time you see them in an exam, it's going to use a lot of your time. So I'd really encourage you guys to learn these because it will save you massive amounts of time in an exam. So along with the special angles, I also have what I call the ugliest siblings of these special angles. And remember in an earlier video, I mentioned that any angle greater than 90 degrees was an ugly angle. So each of the angles 30, 45, and 60 have uglier siblings in each of the quadrants 2, 3, and 4, where they're greater than 90 degrees, and they have siblings in these quadrants. So, for example, if you had to look in quadrant 2, an ugly sibling of 130 would be 150. And why is that? Because we know that, let's say, sine 150, right? is the same as sine 180 minus 30, which is the same as sine 30. So this 30 here is related 
to that 150 in some way. And I like to refer to them as the ugly siblings of the special angles. So I've just put up a table here so we can try to extract all the ugly siblings of 30, 45, and 60. So 180 minus 30, we've already done. That was 150, right? We could say, what's 180 plus 30? And here we're using our supplementary angles, obviously. You could use your complementary angles, but those would be a bit more difficult because co for complementary, co for co function, you'd have to change your functions. So I prefer to use supplementary angles. So 180 plus 30 is 210. 360 minus 30 is 330. And 360 plus is 390. So these are all the siblings of 30 degrees. And when you use reduction formula on any of these angles, your argument is always going to end up as 30. However, the sign in front of your trig function might change because of the cast rule. So just be aware of that. And for 45, um, if we say 180 minus 45, that's 135. Plus is 225. And 360 minus, that's 315. And 360 plus is 405. We can do the same thing with 60. That's going to be 120, 240, 300, 420. And along with knowing the values of your special angles, I'd really recommend learning the ugly siblings of 30, 45, and 60 because it's really important for you to be able to recognize each of these angles in a type 4 question, which we will go on to do in the next video. And you'll see why it's so important to recognize each of these angles. So as you can see, each angle has four siblings, one in each of the quadrants. So this is quadrant two, three, four, and one. So each angle has a sibling in each quadrant. And obviously it's going to have a value. So, so we've established that each angle has four siblings, one in each quadrant. Now, because of the cost rule, we know that only in two quadrants is each trig function positive. For Take, for example, sine. Sine is positive in one and two, but negative in three and four. So two of the values of the siblings of, this, of the ang special angles are going to be negative, and two are going to be positive, as you'll see now. So let's take, bring up the siblings of 30 degrees, and you can see I have here 150, 210, 330, and 390, and we also have the sine, cos, and tan for each of these values. Now you can recognize that for sine, all of our values have to do with half. For cos, it's root 3 over 2, and for tan, it's 1 over root 3. And this is because 30 siblings will have the same value as 30. So we know that sine 30 is half. So all the values are going to be the same. It's just the signs that are going to be different. And that's going to depend on what quadrant each of the ugly siblings are in. So for example, 150 is in the second quadrant where sine is positive. 210 is in the third quadrant. And we know sine is negative in quadrant three. So it's only our signs that are going to change. And the values of each of these siblings, I'm not going to expect you to go and by heart these, but they are easy to remember. So for example, if you wanted the value of cos 330, you could calculate that value mentally because you know 330 lies in quadrant four. Quadrant four is 360 minus. So in your head, you could say that's going to be 360 minus 30. That's going to give you 330. And that's then going to be cos 30. And you know the value for cos 30 is root 3 over 2. And you know that in quadrant 4, cos is positive. So your final answer would be root 3 over 2. And you should be able to do this in your mind within a few seconds. And I think it's, it's a good idea to try to practice this because it also consolidates um, supplementary reduction formula. So if you are able to do these in your head, you'd have no trouble whatsoever with supplementary reduction formula. And I'm just going to pull up 60 and its siblings. So these are 60 siblings, and you can see that all our values are related to the sine, cos, and tan of 60, because we know that sine 60 would have given us root 3 over 2, cos 60 would have been half, and tan 60 would have been root 3. It's just our signs again that are different. and 
like I said, you're not expected to know all of these off by heart, but let's say we took that away and we wanted to know the value, let's say, of cos 120 degrees. I'd be able to immediately tell you that the value of that is going to be negative a half. That's just mentally, because in your mind, you should do the calculation that's going to be cos 180 minus 60, right? Which is cos 60. And because 120 is in the second quadrant, cos is negative there, you know the value of cos 60 is a half, so your answer is going to be negative a half. So immediately you should be able to mentally picture your quadrants and put in your reduction formula and get your answer. And this is obviously bearing in mind that you know the values of your special angles for 30, 45, and 60. So I'll just put the table back up. And as you can see, the answer is negative a half for cos 120. And you should try to do this for the rest of the angles as well. Um, we have the table for 45 here. And you can see that all 45's uh, values are related to the sine, cos, and tan of 45. I will be posting a worksheet with all of these tables in the description below. So you can take a look at them. You can uh, put them up on your wall if you want to. And I think it's just good to know these because obviously when we start type 4 trig questions, which are simplification of trig expressions, you're going to be using these quite a bit. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this made sense and I've explained special angles quite well. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.